welcome. I'm excited. I have an amazing guest that's coming on. Thank you. I have an amazing guest coming on and I'm so, so excited to bring him on. I'm going to bring him on right now, actually. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Vincent? Everything is amazing. Thank you so much for asking. Um, I hope things have been progressing well and you've been doing great. Yes, I have been doing great. I have been doing great. You know, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Welcome everybody. This is Vincent DePaul from the one and only hit movie, Secret Society. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Once again, I want to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, you know, have this time with you. It's, it's just a pleasure and it's an honor. Uh, likewise. And uh, thank you so much for embracing such a great film directed by Jamal Hill and produced by Miyashi Coleman and Rich Coleman. They're pretty remarkable. I mean, the journey to shoot a movie during the pandemic, have it edited, put through post-production and then released on Amazon Prime. It's really a, a um, an amazing, amazing work of God. <laughs> it's, it's a lot to do, quite honestly. Yes, 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 most definitely. Well, I guess we could just go ahead and jump right sure. in it. Listen, let's just go ahead and start off. Give us an introduction and tell me about yourself, your first time you modeled and uh, the first time you started acting. Thank you, thank you so much. So um, my career spans three decades. Uh, I first studied at Johns Hopkins where I did epidemiology, biomedical ethics, and biostatistics in Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami. I matched there. And while I was jogging on the beach uh, on the weekend, a gentleman came up to me and he says, ah, you a modelo. And it was the late Johnny Versace. And so I wow. left Mount Sinai Medical Center working in the MRI and magnetic resonance imaging and also working in the ER and doing all that. And I started modeling. Uh, my first jobs were at Bell Harbor Shops in South Beach um, for Versace. And then I traveled to Milan, Athens, Greece, Munich, Germany, Paris, France, you know, the entire round that a model does. And so that really segued into my work in film and TV. Before all this in 1987, my first film uh, was Hairspray, directed by John Waters, starring the Lake Divine, wow. and Ricky Lake, Sonny Bono, Blondie, Debbie Harry, and uh, Mink Stoll, and Clayton Prince, just an amazing, amazing cast. And so that movie was about integration in the 1960s, 1962 specifically, where there was a lot of race riots. And so it was basically saying, you know, everyone, you know, we need to integrate, we need to all respect each other and love each other. Uh, and in the 60s, they used to segregate the, the uh, shows. So they would have a dance show and they would only have like uh, the white kids on the dance show or the black kids on the dance show, but they never integrated white and black dancing. So really this movie was about setting a message that, you know, we all can live together harmoniously. And it really, um, Hairspray was uh, kind of a revolutionary film that added uh, levity and laughter, but also uh, tackled a very important issue and that was segregation in the 60s wow 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 that's amazing i <laughs> definitely gotta put some respect on your name because a lot of people don't know like you you've done it like you know you ain't new to this you're true to this you've been doing this <laughs> thank you you're <laughs> you know so kind <laughs> so uh walk me through the experience when you first got on set with social society like how was it working with the directors Oh my gosh, so Secret Society, and it first started the I'm genesis- sorry, I said Social Society, I don't know Oh, why Secret Society, no, that's perfect. It, we're very social with each other. Um, <laughs> the genesis Secret. of Secret Society was back in July, uh, there was an um, email sent to my manager saying, um, we're interested in Vincent uh, for this movie. And at first I wasn't aware of the movie or, or knew that much about it. So my manager, sent me all this information and then I started to search Miyasha Coleman online and I had realized that she was a New York bestseller author and that she had a prolific career as a writer first. And a lot of times great scripts 
start with great books. And when you have that written word, that is basically your template for the feature film. So I was like, sure. So then uh, in July, uh, they sent me the script. Um, they had said that they attached other talent to the movie. And they said that uh, I'll be working with director Jamal Hill. And then I was like, well, this is great. I, I know of his work and he is an outstanding director. And I would like to be aligned with a film like this. And so that's how that all came to be. And then once I got on set, it was like a family that I never had that I did on set in Doral, Florida, shot on location in South Florida, hiring people from all over, uh, giving it opportunities to uh, crew members, uh, lighting, grips, handymans, all these folks, they were locally there in South Florida. And then town, of course, flew in from different places. I flew in from Los Angeles. I was just wrapping on a film there. And I came back to South Beach, to my beloved South Beach. And it was great. That's amazing. So tell Thank me, you. like, who produced this film? Because this film was amazing. Certainly. I think there's a little bit of crackling noise. There's something that's crackling. Oh, now it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Listen. What was that? You know what? Here's the backstory. So <laughs> while you were talking, my yes. headset fell out of my ear and <laughs> my cat got a hold on to it. So you was hearing my kitty. Hold on, because she You have a little pussy cat. I love it. Here's two Oh yes. Hello. Hey hey. I love that. That's that's the best. She is she is a Okay. <laughs> That's completely fine. I love it. All right. um, so, easy. Okay. so, so sorry, you were saying. Yeah. So who uh, who uh, produced this independent film? Certainly. So, uh, truly, <laughs> Miyashi Coleman and her husband Rich Coleman. They are the spirit of independent filmmakers, truly. They're the ones that, uh, from the start of it, had this um, kind of vision to do this film. And Miyasha and Rich have known each other since they were teens. And so they discussed that when they were teenagers. And so as a result, in time, after the bestseller, uh, in time, they developed you know, all of the looks, all the wardrobe, they selected all the set locations, all the set dressing. They went and tackled such an enormous task, and that is to do an entire feature film during COVID and with a story that is a very uh, edgy kind of controversial story. And they did it flawlessly. And of course, it was helmed by Jamal Hill, who with his um, inertia and movement was able to shoot at our days efficiently. We, we did lots of pages in one day, we would be shooting on a, a million, million dollar mansion floating on the water, then then we would go to locations at a beautiful hotel, then we'd go to locations uh, on set, then we'd go to locations at a, an amazing restaurant, all scouting locations, all those things take time. And they were amazing, but it wasn't just Jamal, uh, Miyasha, and Rich was the talented cast and crew behind it. And those talented cast and crew are really the unsung heroes. So if you go to Secret Society, the movie, or go to www.imdb.com and type in Secret Society, you can see the entire list of the cast and crew um, that, that did the work. Uh, cinematographer, Anthony Donas, uh, film editor, Anthony Donas, um, just the makeup department, Picasso, everybody. <laughs> They're the unsung heroes. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and it seems like they had a well good team put together and yes. it seems like y'all had a good time. We did, we did. We had a, a remarkable team. Yes. So speaking of the team, uh tell me how were you casted and how were you so reluctant to take a controversial role? Well, I, a little bit more about that is that um whenever I'm developing or selecting my my roles, I look at it as the, the fabric that is the woven career of my life. <laughs> so I do films that may be first, you know, I, I play a dad in Christmas movies often. And so that's 
one kind of thread in the career. And then I do some roles that are more uh, edgier. Uh, you know, The Welder, directed by David Liz, also shot in the Everglades. Uh, that movie uh, where I play, you know, a Dr. Frankenstein. So I try to create um, the overall picture of my career. So I'm not in any way typecast. It's like, oh, he always plays this role. He always plays this. So when I read the role, I thought that this would be perfect to be woven into the fabric of my career. <laughs> and, and it turned out wonderfully. Wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. So, you know, you've been doing all of this and doing all of that. And yes. You know, I had to get... I had to get a, get a hold of you because you were like, yo, I'm traveling. I'm I know. I'm it was just like, one, one, in. I know. It was like one thing after another. It's travel. It's, it's constant. Uh, we're all traveling all the time and we're all doing different things. Um, right now I'm in pre-production of one film. I, I flew to Malta after this film and I did a movie in Malta called Love on the Rock with uh, Oscar nominee Stephen Bauer from Scarface from Miami. Um, Jeff Behe, uh, the star David Ayer White from the God's Not Dead uh, franchise. And so I did that. So it was like, okay, well, now I have to uh, travel here. So yeah, I, the actor's life, you're, you're in constant flux. So Right, exactly. Speaking of Oscars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's some things going around. Is it true that you are a two-time consecutive Emmy winner? I am. So I won, oh! two, <laughs> I won two consecutive Emmys. Uh, the first Emmy was in 2015 for the Television Academy of Arts and Sciences for Outstanding Achievement for the Bay the Series, which is on Amazon Prime, created by Gregory J. Martin. My cast includes uh, Christos Andrews, um, soap veterans Mary Beth Evans, Karuchi Tran. Um, so it's a really great ensemble cast. Also, Vivica Fox was on the Bay as Karuchi, well. Um, Karuchi. I'm sorry? I love Karuchi. <laughs> oh, she's delightful. I, I play Father Leone, the priest. I married her, I think, two or three times in the movie, in, in all the different um, movements in the, in the series is that, you know, uh, I've married her a few times. you marrying everybody and everybody. I, as the priest, <laughs> as Father Leone, it's like, okay. Um, so, and also Vivica Fox, as I said, and Vanessa B. Williams. Uh, wow. the, 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 there are two Vanessa Williams. The one Vanessa Williams that was on Mallory's Place. Is that Vanessa B. Williams or uh -huh. Vanessa A. Williams? There's a, the other Vanessa Williams. So she uh -huh. also was on the Bay the Series. So um, I won that year. And then the second year we were nominated again. And I won the consecutive Outstanding Achievement in New Approaches for the Bay the Series for that and I am forever grateful for everything and I'm blessed to have been recognized by the Television Academy um, this year. I, I am um, hoping for a nomination for The Encounter which was produced uh, by the, the uh, Pure Flix company which did the series uh, Encounter 1 and Encounter 2. It was directed by Vance Null, uh, episode number seven. So yes. That's amazing. Wow. Thank you. So uh, let's jump right into it. How, in what way did you relate to the character of uh, Derek Rossi in Secret Society? Certainly. So the anatomy of my character, the, the building of Derek Antonio Rossi. Um, basically, I received the book Miyashi Coleman gave me, and I use that as the Bible. So I read the book. I, I understood about the different relationships that Derek Rossi had with his brother, with his family, with his uh, relationships. And so I, I build on that. So I ask questions about Derek Rossi. Who, what, where, and when? Who are you? Where did you come from? And when did this all happen to you? And so to base those questions, I did as ifs. So uh, Jason, who played my brother, Terry, amazingly perfect casting i talked to him on the phone we talked talk about different things that he liked motorcycles different things like that i needed to build the camaraderie between the relationships that the 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 individuals be watching on screen on their smart device on the big screen wherever so i was building those um those relationships then i called my co-star which is uh tina 
Price, who was played by Erica Pinkett. And we started to talk on the phone, discussing some of the dialogue and, and getting um, kind of a relationship going there. Because all of a sudden, you have to jumpstart your, your emotions with this person that is your love interest, that is your brother, that is your um, killer, whatever that relationship is, you have to create and produce the, the anatomy of what that is. And so I did that. And what I found remarkable is that not always do we have the luxury for the writers to be on set with you, that if you have a question, the director is amazing. And Jamal was so, so great because if, if there is something that, that you're thinking and you're like, well, tell me a little bit more about this. Well, let's go to the text. And who wrote the text? Well, that was Miasha. She was on set every day. She was there supporting this story. And um, you don't get that. Uh, I could be at Universal Studios, Sony Pictures. I did the movie Poseidon with Wolfgang Peterson. I did a lot of movies. And you don't always have the person that actually wrote the material there that you can ask questions to them because you're trying to understand your character. So I was blessed as well as the other cast members were blessed to have her there every day on set with us. Wow, and so that's, that's awesome. how I built that character. And then you go into it and then you shoot and you hope that the, the director and you uh, align to the way you want this scene to roll out. And then when it does, you move on and you shoot the next, you rehearse, prep, shoot, move on. So it's a right, constant your thing. Your character yeah. as Derek Rossi was phenomenal. And like, oh, thank you. It, it, it seemed like, it seemed like when you got on your knee and you proposed to her, right. it seemed like you knew her for a lifetime. And it seemed like, I, I looked at the, the film and I said, this man is in love with her. I, and, and, he really, and he really does care. And that is, that is a lot to do with also the, the energy that the other actor gives you. Um, Erica Pinkett is love pure. <laughs> she gave me so much um, in that scene, in every scene that I can then work off of to give back. So it's like a ping pong match, like a ball going back and forth. She's hitting the ball to me and I'm hitting the ball back. When that ping pong match is going on, it feels remarkable. And they were true moments because you, the character, fall in love and not just one take, but you fall in love nine times, nine different takes, and you're falling in love over and over again. And then they give you back this energy, this wave of love, and then you give that wave of love back. So thank yeah, you. Because I was having this conversation um, last night with a group of, of friends and I was, uh, I wanted to know like, how did you become how do, how do you build the bond? You know, I know you have to take time and just like how you say, you have to jumpstart a relationship out of nowhere, you know, right. to portray these characters. Like, how do you create that bond to really make it authentic? Like, what do you do? Do you have any special tactics or any? The special tactics or the, the elements that I use is very uh, Strasberg, uh, Lee Strasberg, who of course did the movie, The Godfather. Uh, he played Jaime Roth in The Godfather. He was the teacher to um, Strasberg taught uh, basically everyone, James Dean, uh, Marlon Brando, um, Al Pacino, uh, Robert De Niro, Marilyn Monroe. He uh, encourages us to live in the moment and have sense memory and also truth. So basically never act you're behaving. So wow. the audience wants to like see you behave. One. You're not acting uh, on camera, you're behaving and then the lens captures a slice of your life, a slice of your sorrow, a slice of your joy, a slice of your um, angst, whatever that is, that's really what it is. And I, hopefully I, I, as I continue my career, I become more and more natural and organic. That's, that's my dream is always to have a very pure interpretation of every character. Yes, because I, I don't know, I just felt that I really felt you through the, the screen. And I was like, this man really loved her. I really yeah. felt that it was very, um, it, you were so sincere and you was just so Thank concerned. You. And it's like you had yeah. so much passion in, uh, you know, making sure her, her friend was okay. Oh, and, right now. 
Yeah. And, and Celeste was played flawlessly mm -hmm. uh, by Raina Love. I mean. Absolutely. So. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. I kind of did a little buffer there. So it's fine. tell me, uh, where was this setting take place? Because it was hard to kind of tell because I knew it was some somewhere on the beach somewhere. Yeah, and Mexico, Los Angeles. Um, okay. Well, I, so a lot of it was shot in Doral, Miami Beach, and surrounding oh, areas. Oh, really, God. but we we doubled, you know, Mexico and things like that, and and they shot so wonderfully that we all, because we were in a pandemic, we couldn't fly to Latin America. We all were self-contained and you know doing a COVID test and all that. So we shot all of that locally in South Florida. But so it how, looked like you were traveling. So how was you on set with the COVID? Like, did you have to test every day or? Every oh my day gosh, yes. Yeah. So I did my prelim test, and then every three days I did my personal test. Everyone else was fine. Fortunately, I never got COVID. I got my Moderna shot, and so I'm completely you know happy about that. So they used every precaution shooting on set with all the cast and crew and very COVID compliant. Wow, and you know, you know, I love that South Florida, I love Florida. I'm from Miami oh. myself, and I love that heat. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina now, but anytime I gotta travel, I go, stay there for probably a week or two, because my mama don't want me to leave, and then I come all the way back up here. <laughs> yes, well, South Florida is just like a, a great environment, tropical, wonderful, so. We welcome you back whenever you come. Yes, most definitely. Because I already talked to Jason. And Jason was like, I'm down here. Let me know. I was like, come on down. Come over there. I'm crashing. <laughs> 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 yes. So tell me, if you was the writer, you know, because everybody got their own say-so about how what they changed and right. what they didn't like and what they liked. If you was the writer of Secret Society, what things that you would change or add to this film? Well, um, I think that it, it's pretty amazing the way it is. Uh, I, quite, what I think is that I hope that in, there are three books that they're based on, so it's a trilogy. I would hope that in the other books that uh, we get to see more of the relationship between Celeste and her mother, played by Vivica A. Fox. And um, I want that to, if there's some kind of epiphany where she then accepts her uh, being a transgender woman, I would love that to happen. Um, I would like my character to some way forgive the unforgivable, which is uh, Khalil, who's played by Jeremy Meeks. By the way, Jeremy, amazing. I, what a truthful soul, beautiful, passionate soul he is. And his portrayal is very, very um, solid and filled with a lot of angst and emotion and a lot of uh, truth. So I uh, just great work on his side. Um, so yeah, so maybe he, he talks to Khalil and said, you know, basically, I forgive you for what you did. But then, you know, uh, he has some kind of revelation or I just go crazy in the second movie. I don't know. I, I have to read the other books, but really it's the author's um, interpretation of, of who we should be, and they can go in so many different directions. So um, I love the written word, and I honor the written word. So for me, no changes. Wow. Okay, <laughs> well, that, that's, that, if that's how you feel, that's what it yeah, is. You yeah. know, a lot of people, uh, they join projects and they get in and they really just love the way it is and they don't want anything to be changed right um it's crazy because you know a lot of the trans community was in uproar because they felt that you know there should have been trans characters there shouldn't have been this and there shouldn't have been that right and you know how do you feel about you know the people that want to make the changes i love that you asked me this question so for the trans community I embrace you and I love you and thank you for being so nurturing to me. Um, in the trans world, I was so very blessed to have so many people in my life that have been so kind. Uh, Candace Kane, um, and then of course, Laverne Cox from um, Orange is the New Black, uh, where I played a correctional officer on the series. Um, the, the, in, to me, um, Tina and Celeste, were, were trans to me. They were transgender. I fell in love with them as transgenders. So that's me. 
that's what I fell in love with. So no matter who they cast in the role, I would fall in love with them. And so I never looked at them as anything but women. And so that is something very important um, in LGBTQ community is that we embrace you unconditionally. You are who you are, and that is the most important thing, and we celebrate you. So uh, for the community, um, I say, let us make other movies. Let us do other projects together. Um, you can reach me via Instagram. Let me read your scripts. Let me hear your stories because all of your stories are important. Let us shepherd your projects along the way. And I myself believe that that can happen. And all of a sudden we shouldn't be, uh, you know, torn as a society. We should embrace black filmmakers. We should embrace trans filmmakers. Um, I was very happy to work with a trans uh, director, AJ Mattioli, and we shot in New York City and it's called Neon Boys. And I play Mr. Ruxton. And so trans director, um, transgender, who wrote a beautiful story. And I was all of a sudden had the blessing of working with a transgender director. So I say we need to do more that it's not based on uh, anything except creating and let's all create together. So that's, that's amazing. Me. <laughs> and that was, and, and speaking of trans, because you was just leading me to my next question. And before we get to that, um, I also want to ask, you know, I understand that uh, you also had a beautiful experience with AJ and uh, seems like you had also uh, met uh, Laverne Cox. Um, I yeah. think it's, and then um, you stated that, you know, you felt that um, Tina and Celeste were actually trans. Yes. Um, you know, you, I mean, because just because you said um, we are not acting, we have to behave. So they were behaving as trans characters. However, they are biologically cisgender women. Right. And in the event, in the event, if these were trans uh, uh, characters um, in real life, um, and would you be comfortable in any way? Uh, or what would be the comfortability if they're absolutely comfortable into any type of um, intimate scenes or anything? Would you be okay with that? Yes. Do you realize that it is amazing because all of a sudden you have another layer that that you get to vibe and you get to communicate with, and so um, very comfortable. Uh, that's the most amazing thing that we, um, if you're in Hollywood or if you're in New York or if you, wherever you're shooting, I shot around the world in Wales, Milan, Paris, uh, Malta, no matter where I am, I get to have the experiences of meeting others. And those others are the ones that all of a sudden are creating the art where each of us are artisans. And so for me, extremely comfortable. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to all the transcripts now. <laughs> so please, <laughs> in the transgender community. Oh, here we go. They're my drum. Um, oh, the, okay. I love music. Um, Me too. So, <laughs> so we all have to kind of, uh, you know, come together and figure out, let's do more. Let's do more content. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, have you, oh, well, you have worked with trans uh actors and directors. Yes. What were your experience with them being on set? Did you feel different? Uh, yeah. Did you feel normal? Like, what was your experience? It, it was seamless. It was, it was great. I, I got to um, uh, that, gosh, I, I got a new life experience, basically, and how blessed I was. Um, yeah, that's, that's yes. truly what happened. <laughs> Claudette Glaze says he is very much a good actor. I like him a lot and his ability to channel his character. And that Thank is you. very important because we have a lot of actors that may have some boundaries and may not be so comfortable as you. But we do, um, uh, uh, we do really uh, love actors that really can become adaptable in any situation. So we want to thank you again for that. Thank you. And Claudette, if you have any other questions, you can ask them here or uh, Vincent DePaul 12 on Instagram. You can send me a message. I would love to answer any of your questions. But to all the actors and, and filmmakers out there, my advice is surround yourself with like-minded people, other great creators and artisans, and constantly um, insulate yourself with other people that are are a, 
let's say, are able to help you discover your dream. And that's really important. I always surround myself with other um, talent and those talent always uh, encourage me and empower me. And so be around people that will encourage and empower. <laughs> Absolutely. Claudette is a very good friend of mine. And we also had a conversation today. I told her I was going to be interviewing you and she was very excited. Aww. And one of the questions that did pop up was, how do you feel about the violence that's happening in the LGBT community, well, specifically trans? Uh, it's very upsetting. And it's not just the trans community's concern, it's everyone's concern. We need to love, embrace, and support everybody, everywhere, everyone. And um, I don't know, I just, I feel that we have to be more conscious. We have to be more aware and say, these are our brothers and sisters and we need to take care of each other. Because if we don't, we will perish. Yeah, absolutely. And I do agree. And, you know, um, it, it, the, the movie definitely uh, showed uh, the violence that is happening with, you know, in the trans community. And right. I feel that, you know, it's, it's devastating and it's, it's very heartbreaking. And, you know, you hate to see it. And a lot of, you know, trans women was not too happy that that's all they was able to see. Mm -hmm. um, however, I, I do feel that it was the truth and it needed to be told. And, and you know, just like Harvey was saying, it's going to be more and more and more and more stories after this. But I do feel that this was the highlight. Um, and people really need to see the hurt and the pain. You know, they really need to go down before they go up. How do you feel about that? I think it's important. I feel that um, Miyasha Coleman uh, consulted with Amaya Scott. And with the Maya Scott um, in the transgender community, Amaya very much um, told Miasha all the different uh, kind of uh, struggles that uh, she knew in that community. And that she then um, used us as a vessel to tell about the crime, to tell about the murders and, and all of that. So, we were vessels for her to create these characters so the world can see it and, and it can be widely distributed around the world so that they can bring awareness to it. And I'm, I'm honored to be that vessel. And as long, you know, along with my other cast members, as long as we realize that this, you know, all these things, although it's based, uh, let's say on actual events or based on fiction, this does happen and everyone needs to take it to heart that we need to be the people changing. We need to be the conscious ones. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of Amaya Scott, I wanna thank again um, her for uh, even uh, being a part of the project and thanks uh, to Miyasha for having uh, uh, a specific type of a group of people to actually tell the stories that they can relate to. Um, also, uh, Amaya Scott also took to Twitter and to sum up, she was saying that, you know, she didn't agree with everything that was going on in the, um, the film and that, you know, she discussed some things that uh, Miyasha or maybe uh, one of the directors uh, maybe didn't agree on or didn't choose to um, add on or take mm -hmm. off to the script. So she said that she kind of, you know, threw in the towel with that and that uh, she was actually surprised that her name was still in the critics. Like, how do you feel about that? Any uh, information? Certainly. That you have so, so it is the director and the producer's um, vision or interpretation of Secret Society. And that all the different people that they would like to honor, they're honored in the end photo play credits. Those are the special thanks. And that what Amaya Scott did is that she gave um, some pearls or, or wisdom to these producers, to this production, to this director, to this filmmaker group, to this writer. And as a result, the filmmakers wanted to thank her. And so I feel that that's not a surprise. That's, that's common in Hollywood. That's industry standard. We thank those, we embrace those, and we move forward. So everyone that played a role from the, the wardrobe to 
you know, every department, they're all thanked for what they did. And Ms. Scott, I, I look forward to meeting you one day and thank you for uh, being so wonderful in, in everything you do. So thank you. Yeah, um, what, I, what I did appreciate is that Mayasha at least took the time out to reach into uh, a, a transgender uh, woman's life uh, to uh, help get some uh, feedback for, as a cisgender Absolutely. woman. And, you know, because it's just only so much that she can do as a cisgender woman, as a director, as a writer. Right. So it's good and to have the, you know, the experience from a person that lived their life. So, right. And you know, that's great. It's just that within the parameters of shooting during COVID, shooting on location, having limited resources, and we couldn't do everything, but we tried to really, um, be as authentic as possible. But, you know, that's the spirit of independent filmmaking. Believe me, we would like it all to be that big, you know, huge uh, tentpole film, you know, that's really, that's great. But when we're trying to, on our first film, doing this, I think it's remarkable what they accomplished. I mean, I, I give them a lot of uh, credit for that. So congratulations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, how was your experience preparing the role with working with your wife, Tina Price, played as Erica Peake? It just, I touched a little bit about it, but I, I'll continue. Um, to this day, we send messages to each other, and she will always be my wife, uh, Tina Price uh, Rossi, <laughs> forever and ever, because she basically... Uh, she became her, she lived her, she breathed her, everything that she did, every uh, nuance about the way she spoke, the way she dressed, the way she walked, the way she kissed was perfect. And so the experience is great and, and I look forward to uh, working with her again and again and again. So it was so great. When, so when you have these roles, right? When you yeah. become the father, when you become the doctor, <laughs> when you become the husband, and you build these relationships with these other cast members, when you go on to do other projects, are you still looked at by husband or, you know, how is it in the- in Forever, the because life? we're, we're <laughs> basically preserved in history on this movie forever, for generations to come. Always, people will see these relationships and they will look at those relationships. I mean, I, I've, you know, I've been in movies for three decades, it's 30 years, and to this day, you know, I, I see them, people saying, oh my gosh, you, oh my God, I loved you. I felt so bad when your, your wife during that Christmas movie went to heaven and she became an angel and then she came back to tell your daughter that everything's gonna be okay, take care of your dad. You know, and I'm like, thank you. And like, they really believe that my wife was an angel and that, you know, my daughter um, Raven, you know, uh, was going through life struggles and her mom talked to her to comfort me. Like, they always will exist. And I love that, so. Absolutely, wow, that's amazing. And like, once again, congratulations from everything you've done and everything that's in the future because 30 years in the business, you gotta put some respect on your name. And you know, and you just so and 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 you know what? You could have been. You definitely could have blown your horn, and you could have, you know, really divaed out on me. But you were very sweet, very humble, and I just, you know, I love your spirit, and I, I, I adore you. Likewise, likewise, and and I just want to say just a few things. Just run down the cast list really quick, and how wonderful they are. Vivica Fox, who plays Charles's mother, which is Celeste, who then, uh, prior to that, was Charles, um, always thought of her as her, um, because that, although the body you're born in may not be the body that you live your life in, so for me, she was always Celeste, but uh, in the credits, it was Vivica Fox. What, a, what an amazing um, uh, contribution she made to this film, and that she was so real and uh, she had her own life struggles dealing with the fact that her child would be transgender. And so she played that wonderfully. Um, Jeremy Meeks, of course, Khalil, amazing. Um, Trey Cheney, O oh, was just remarkable how he had his epiphany in the movie. Uh, Tyler Hopkins, oh my gosh, is Michael. I can't get over, um, you know, 
he understands comedy as well as drama so well. And I was so happy that I got to work with, with him. He is just really a great soul. Uh, Kelvin Hare, who played uh, James, uh, of course, my brother, Jason, you always be my brother forever and ever. Uh, you are great. You're the real thing. And uh, then the other is the actor, Mitch, who played the wealthy gentleman. I love Mitch's humor. He cracked me up on set every day. He has such, uh, he's just very animated and, and he's great. And so I was really happy to work with him. Um, Mitch Lemus. So just everyone. Um, I just am so happy we all got to do this together. And now we're, we're a life family. So this is great. So next question. Wow. So sorry. I just want you to just go no, down. You're good. That, that was yeah. the other question. How was the other members and how did you feel on set with them? And you already answered it. Well, yeah. And then at the end, Randall Love and I, those scenes at the cemetery, uh, I just, I, I was really quite crying, like every take. Yeah. I mean, because I, I felt a loss. I mean, yeah. I, I personalized it and I, I looked at my life and the losses that I had and I personalized it and then I really lost Tina. So that was what, what you were seeing was real life happening at that I moment. Felt that. Yeah. I felt that, I felt that. And that's why I was like, your apartment is so authentic, very sincere. Um, Thank you. And you know, and you just have something about your voice. It's just so smooth. Like you could really be a late <laughs> talk radio host, like, you know, after the dark. Like a Ron Burgundy. Ooh, Ron B. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would do good. You ever thought Thank about you. doing radio? I never have done radio. I I Listen, think that'd be fun. Voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right, back on topic. All right, so your first LGBTQ film was Contador is for Lovers in 2006, yes. shot in Panama. How does this compare? Oh my gosh. So uh, the first film that was an LGBT film was Contadors for Lovers, uh, directed by Jorge Amir, shot in Panama, the first of its kind. One of the first blockbuster, most rented uh, LGB Latin film shot in Panama in blockbuster history. Do you remember Black? Buster? No, you don't oh, remember yeah, Blockbuster? I remember. Blockbuster. The, the... <laughs> I remember. Okay, cool. Okay, sorry. I know I'm just some people. It's like, so I walk into Blockbuster and on the front shelf is Contadors for Lovers and me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so that movie was one of the films where uh, I traveled to Panama with my fiance and our tour guide, Gabriel, falls in love with both of us. So it is a relationship between three. Very different, but yet very similar to the story because it's about finding love and losing love. And so in this, in Contadors for Lovers, there was finding love and then there was loss. And so they, they compare to each other because all of these stories are really, you know, journeys. And so uh, that was really remarkable. Since then I've done other films, but uh, you know, I feel that that movie really opened up my eyes because I learned a lot about those relationships that I then use in all my films to follow. So, yeah, pretty remarkable. Yes, yes, beautiful. That is really beautiful. Um, if anybody is watching uh, Secret Society, um, what would you want the audience to take away from the film? Certainly, hopefully the audience will take away something of uh, compassion, understanding, consciousness, that uh, the LGBT community, uh, everyone needs to be more aware and accepting and understand that uh, we are all in it together. And that's something that I, I will always speak about, that we all need to come together as one family. And hopefully they'll, they'll come away entertained because that, that's really the reason why we did the movie is to entertain an audience, but also bring awareness in, in a very um, entertaining way. You know, it's not like you should do this or you should do that. We're, we're entertaining an audience, but um, shedding light on something. And I think that's great. And, and for 
Miasha and to, to Jamal to nurture this subject. Um, I love that because, you know, why did she choose this? Why didn't she choose some other subject? She really felt compelled to tell these stories of Tina and Celeste and their relationships and, and their angst and their celebrations. And I, I find that remarkable. So um, much kudos to her and to the entire production team for caring about this subject. So thank you. Absolutely. I really do feel that there were, you know, definitely a purpose with this film. And, you know, uh, you may have a lot of, you know, trans women that wasn't too happy. Um, that may have took some of the stories uh, a little bit personal um, because this is something, you know, that they heavily, uh, heavily relate to. Um, however, I feel that there was a purpose. The story needed to be told. And this story was, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it was it was for a heterosexual audience, just like I told Jason and Mitch. I, I, would, um, I it, thought it, it yeah, could it, be. It, it, it was because I I thought it could be for all audiences. Quite honestly, um, I told them, you know, you know, whatever I need to take off my clothes, whatever it takes, I'm taking it off for all audiences. <laughs> it's not it's not heterosexual any audience. Whatever is needed that's what we're going to do because we want all people to embrace it. So it's interesting that you, you thought it was for heterosexual audiences. Well, I, I, a lot of I understand that, you know, you as an actor, you was able to portray yourself that, you know, uh, or you, you really see for this film for everybody to embrace it, which is amazing. But I really personally feel that even though everybody could really watch this, this film was packaged in a way for heterosexual, specifically African-American, cisgender men and women that are heterosexual to really dissect and really get into the movie. And that is the reason why my Mayasha did not put in the caption LGBT or trans or the reason why I feel personally she did not um, cast trans actors because it would have automatically been an LGBT film and only LGBT majority of the LGBT community really just would have watched it. Yeah, I feel it, like this was an easy target to get families or anybody to just sit down and watch this movie and all of a sudden find out. Fabulous. And I think that whatever accomplishment it accomplished, whatever it did, I'm so happy for it. And that all families should be watching it, just like with Brokeback Mountain, just like Milk with James Franco and Oscar winner Sean Penn. A lot of times we're not cast in the roles we should be cast in and then roles that we're cast in we shouldn't necessarily be in. And that's just it. It's just the way uh, the industry is. Um, but it's whoever business. it's the, yeah, but whoever we can uh, get the message to, because I know I got personal messages from the LGBT community. Uh, specifically saying, thank you for doing this. Thank you for taking on this role. Thank you for telling this story. So Ain't nobody cussed you out. No, not yet. But, there, you know, I want to hear everybody. So please. Uh, but you was, the, you was the nice guy anyway, so you don't even count. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't kill nobody. Yeah. You're so kind. No, yeah, I, I want to hear from everybody because yeah. I learn. I, I become more evolved. So thank you. I can't believe that we only have eight minutes left. <laughs> yeah. just like, I feel like yeah. there should be, we could do a follow-up, but this is so great. So I'm so sorry. Please continue. Yeah, we, yeah, we can. You know, anytime, <laughs> you know, we can always do a part two because you know, know. there may be questions after this. So, so tell me, what do we have for Vincent DePaul in the future? Do you have any up and coming projects that you have Give us a little sneak peek. You probably won't be able to tell us too much, but tell us what we need. Um, well, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff coming on. So um, one, of course, go to www.imdb.com and you type in Vincent DePaul and you'll see my filmography. But right now I'm very proud of uh, the movie Tesla with Ethan Hawke. I co-star with him uh, about Nikola Tesla who created Concurrent Energy. It's right now online. Um, a new movie called... Uh, God's Not Dead, We the People. It's a franchise. It's with Isaiah Washington from Grey's Anatomy, uh, David A.R. White, uh, 
Antonio Sabato Jr., um, uh, William um, Forsyth. I mean, the list goes on. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, another movie called Love on the Rock, directed by Matt Shapiro. Uh, very excited about that movie. Uh, I, there's a lot of stuff coming. I don't know when they're going to be released. And of course, The Welder that I star in Shot in the Everglades, directed by um, David Liz. And very excited about that movie. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, you've been so in much the business going for <laughs> going on over 30 years. And, like, if there were anybody that was aspiring to be an actor or actress, yes. what type of advice would you give them if they're just getting into the business? I know it's hard, it's tough, you know, getting casting and, you know, going on set. And, you know, what type of advice would you give them? Um, my advice would be to always um, be confident in who you are. Uh, always listen to your heart and know that you don't um, accomplish anything by giving up. You need to keep on forging ahead. Uh, again, surround yourself by like-minded people that will help you with your journey. Um, other artists, other cameramen, other directors, be in that community and uh, support each other. And uh, be true to thyself is the most important because once you're true to yourself, it opens your your heart, your soul, your your entire being into whatever you want to do. Yes. So, uh, you know, is there anything that you want to leave the audience or, you know? Um, thank you, Raphael. Thank you, uh, Claudia. Thank you, everyone, for being here and enjoying the interview. And, and thank you to you for, for uh, caring so much about our film, Secret Society, on Amazon Prime. Uh, and I just want everyone to uh, know that there is an end to, you know, to this COVID world. And that once we come out of the other side, I feel like we're going to look back in the, these years and say, those COVID years, we had some of the most amazing music. We had yes. some of the most amazing movies. We had the most amazing poetry. We had the most amazing books because we had time to focus. So um, thank you. And Austin, Austin, yes, and then I have another Christmas movie uh, called, um, oh gosh, uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna remember it, wait a minute. Um, uh, it's called All I Need for Christmas with, uh, with uh, George Stoltz from Seventh Heaven, uh, Claire Coffey, uh, Austin is in it as well. Um, yeah, so that I have a Christmas movie coming out this year. I forgot, sorry. Oh, see, <laughs> yeah. that's what happens when you book and busy, you just get on the go. <laughs> I, I, I get an email from my agent, it's like, okay, Vincent, you're booked on this, uh, you'll be flying to Europe. I'm like, okay, and then you go and you do your work and you, you enjoy. Okay, great, awesome. Very quickly, tell them what they can find or, or screen, uh, stream uh, Secret Society. Certainly. So if you would like to enjoy Secret Society, it's exclusive on uh, Amazon Prime. Go to www.amazon.com. You can put in Secret Society 2021, and then you can buy and or rent. Hi, Jason. Oh, my Jason, God. Jason, Jason, come say hi really quick. Come say hi. hi. I'm so happy. <laughs> Raphael, thank you so much for saying I'm inspirational. You're amazing yourself. Um, Jason, I would love to say hi to you if you're around. <laughs> I don't know if he can come on or not. Uh, I maybe if he sends an in, uh, invite or something. Yeah, he has to put in the request. Oh my gosh, uh, I had uh, an amazing time with you, and like it, 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 like once again, I am so honored to oh, uh, be able to, you know, you squoze me into your busy schedule. Uh, and I was know, like, you got on the phone with me and you just broke everything down. And I love how detailed you are. Oh my gosh, you're very detailed. And you're just you. like, okay, we're going to do this. <laughs> how do you how do you feel about that? And yes. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes whatever, whatever you like. <laughs> Thank you. You're so kind. And to, and to God, God, uh, Des, how do you pronounce that? Oh, God, Goddess. Li, li, mo, ler. Yeah, I think so. 
She's well, uh, she's also a, a she's, great she's, friend of mine, and we have. It's so nice to meet you, and thank you for your compliments. That's so nice. I'm I'm happy you enjoyed Secret Society. Um, oh, uh, one thing. I have the. Oh, we have two more minutes. Okay, one second. Let me try to get this. Oh, there's Jason. Jason! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hey, how are you? I was just talking to your favorite buddy. Oh, I'm so happy to see you, Jason. This is great. Oh my God, this is amazing. I just, um, everyone, if you need to know more about Secret Society, you can just scan this right here. I'm holding oh, it for- QR code, okay. Put it, closer code. To the, put it closer to the screen so they can see it. Yes. This is the QR code to Secret Society, you guys. You guys can go This is This is it. Um, you know you made it when you're on Poppin' Chips. That's me over there. Um, and thank you to the potato chips. And then on my flight back, I think I'm going to eat the Secret Society chocolate bar. And let's do this. Um, I will sign a poster art um, to, uh, let's figure out. What, what competition? Jason, will you sign a poster too? Absolutely. Okay, let's see if we can... Uh, do it to uh, support some community, uh, like uh, a center, a transgender center. Let's see if we can get all the cast members to sign one of the poster arts, and we would donate it to one of the centers. So let's let's brainstorm. Oh, wow, that'd be awesome. And I have one in mind. It's called Pride Lines in Miami, where, okay. you, guys, where you guys were. It's called Pride okay. Lines. That will be nice. So, yeah, let's get it going. I am so excited. So, um, Jason, great to see you. And um, I'm going to go dip this in some peanut butter. And <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what do you want to leave the people with? You got to say something. Oh, well, it's, you know, it's so great to see my on-screen brother, Vince, and my brother from another mother off-screen now. Uh, <laughs> um, I can't say a good, uh, enough good things about Vince. Um, you know, it's not every... You know, you, you get to work with a two-time Emmy winning actor, and I know. Uh, I know I got bragging rights for life now. You know, I got bragging Aww. rights too. I just interviewed a two-time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk to both of you. This is the best. I am so psyched, and um, I hope we all see each other. Uh, there may be plans that this movie will go overseas, so let's hope. That I was other... just gonna ask that. Is it any? Because you know, there's rumors out there that there might be a, a part two. Yes, let's hope. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> That's Woo! great. Yeah, I've been terrorizing Biasha in her inbox. Like, what were we going to see? Are we expecting anything else because it was left on the cliffhanger. So stay tuned. I know. Very exciting. Well, yes. um, I hope we all get to see each other very soon. We had a great premiere in South Florida in Doral. And um, yeah, let's see where else we'll, we'll go. I'll we'll be together. Absolutely. Awesome. We got like 30 seconds left. So I want to thank everybody for coming on. Jason, thank you again for showing your face. Vincent, thank you so much for giving me the time. Oh my gosh. Welcome You're to welcome. Today TV. You guys, make sure you tune in on IG and you tune in and you see, you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you go on Secret Society on Amazon. Listen, take that time out to spend them $10 and go and get and watch that movie and get all your life Listen, I am so excited. We're on our way up, and we certainly enjoyed the trip. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure you go on YouTube real soon. It's going to be uploaded there. Thank you, guys. Thank Vincent you. Jason, I love Take care, everyone. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you.